Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to get started with Azure Artos expansion package from ST. My name is Massimo Pantica, Principal Application Engineer at ST in Microcontroller Division. Let's get started. Well, after a very short introduction to our STM32 Cube ecosystem and this new entry, the Azure Artos Middlewares, we're going to see what this package is about and how it's fully integrated into STM32 Cube MX. And this is going to be the fun part. We'll see how to get started creating our first Azure Artos project for STM32H7. Also, we are going to show all the relevant resources and collaterals in order for you to easily move on with your own Azure Artos projects. If you are not yet familiar with our STM32 Cube, the software ecosystem for STM32 microcontrollers is made and supported by ST and is completely free of charge for all the STM32 developers. We do offer a complete set of C software tools for initial project configuration and code generation, STM32 Cube MX, for development and debugging, STM32 Cube IDE, for programming and option byte configuration, STM32 Cube Programmer, and for long term and non intrusive application monitoring, STM32 Cube Monitor. All our tools are available for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS operating systems. Complement to PC tools are the STM32 Cube MCU packages that for each individual STM32 series include hardware abstraction layer, low level drivers and middlewares. On top of it, STM32 Cube expansion packages are additional sets of middlewares or examples for STM32. With Microsoft Azure Artos integration in our ecosystem, our middleware offer is going to change and improve. We are going to move our main operating system offer from FreeRTOS to Azure Artos ThreadX. FileX will become our primary offer for file system and will replace the existing FATFS. Azure Artos NetX Duo will replace low IP middleware for TCP IP and Azure Artos USB-X will replace ST-USB device and host libraries for USB. That said, our legacy middleware offer will continue to be available on ST GitHub and our customers can still continue to access it and use it into existing or potentially new projects. But let me say that with Azure Artos offering to our ecosystem, we are bringing important key features, fast performance, a complete and consistent professional solution and industry certification for a faster go to market. At the time this video is recorded, ST provides a complete Azure Artos expansion package for STM32H7 with a lot of ready to use examples for ThreadX, FileX, USB-X and NetX Duo on different H7 parts, single and dual core lines, and on different boards. Examples are available for Nucleo H723, STM32H735 Discovery Kit, STM32H747 Discovery Kit, and STM32H743 Evaluation Board. We are going to use the Nucleo H723ZG in this tutorial. The provided examples can be easily ported to any other supported device and development board. Also, let me add that Azure Artos support for other STM32 families is moving very fast and you might have your favorite STM32 part and board already supported awfully by the time you watch this video or very soon otherwise. So please check it out. Well, you can start with Azure Artos in different ways. You can get it from sd.com, visiting our landing page. In this case, a self-contained package with Azure Artos middlewares, CubeMX files and ready-to-use examples is available to you. Or you can get it from ST GitHub. Only limitation in this case would be that you cannot configure Azure Artos middlewares using STM32 CubeMX. Or you can simply start from STM32 CubeMX or STM32 Cube ID. And this is our favorite choice today, so let's open STM32 CubeMX tool. Now, 
First thing is to install the execute by Jurar Tos H7 software package. So click on the install remove button and because we are looking for expansion packages, let's move to the second tab and let's refresh the list with the latest available versions. We can now select the last available version of Azure Artos expansion package, version 1.0.0 at the time this video is recorded, and we can install it. And once the Azure Artos is installed, we can close this window and we start using it. Now, we have different ways to start our Azure Artos project. We can start selecting our favorite H7 part or our favorite H7 board, and then we can add the Azure Artos middleware that we need for our project. Or, and that's what we're gonna do, we can select an existing Azure Artos example for a very easy start. Now, we offer tons of examples, so let's apply some filters in order to select only the Azure Artos ones. We are looking for STM32H7 and for RTOS examples. Then you can use TX underscore prefix in order to list the ThreadX examples. FX underscore for FileX examples. UX for USBX, NX for NetX Duo examples. Let's start with a simple thread creation example for our Nucleo H723. Selecting the example, you get all the info you need the required software packages, the supported toolchain, board, and a full description of the example itself. In this case, the example demonstrates how to create and destroy multiple threads and how to use the preemption threshold to change priorities on the fly. The expected success or error behaviors are described as well. In our case, the thread 1 will toggle the green LED every 500 milliseconds. Then the thread 2 will preempt the thread 1 and we start toggling the same green LED every 200 milliseconds. Let's start with this project. You must specify your desired install project folder. This way the original Azure Artos project will not be modified and you can reuse it in the future as many times as you want. Now, we started from an available example, so you don't really need to modify anything, unless you want to add something else to the example itself. But anyway, let's have a look at the Xcube Azure Artos H7 software pack component selector in order to understand how to modify things, especially if your next step will be to start from an empty project. The hardware profile in the device section reflects our board choice. Make sure the application is set to Azure Artos app in order to generate the proper application code. Our example is very simple and it's only using ThreadX Core and nothing else from the other middlewares, but let me show how KubeMX really helps in case of missing components and other issues. If, let's say, by mistake you unselect the ThreadX Core, STM32CubeMX immediately shows a set of warnings that in this case are telling me that a component is missing and I need to choose among one of those components in order to have a valid project. The dependency can even be resolved automatically whenever possible. In this case, let's reselect ThreadX Core. All conditions are now solved and we can proceed. Another interesting info I want to provide is that uh, today there is no bare metal version of FileX, USBX and NetX. So if you want to use one of those middlewares, you need to enable Artos mode and have ThreadX Core selected. Everything is properly selected in the software pack component selector. Now let's have a look at the software pack configuration. After making sure that the components we need for this project are correctly selected, let's move to the configuration panel. You can change the configuration parameters according to your goals for ThreadX and the Azure Artos application. For each parameter, name, description and constraints are provided. 
memory allocation can be configured in the Azure Artos application tab. Well, everything is finally ready, so let's select your favorite toolchain ID, in our case stm 32 cubeid and let's generate your final code. Your first Azure Artos project for stm 32 cubeid is ready. Please, I always recommend to have a look at the readme file for application description, no limitations, notes, hardware requirements and additional details on how to use it. The main.c contains the Azure Artos initialization call and in the apptradex.c, the apptradex init function allocates all the thread stacks and creates the main thread, thread1 and thread2 and the event flags that we need in this example. Unless you want to modify something or you want to add additional threads, you are simply ready to go. First, let's compile the project. Second, let's connect the Nucleo H723 to our PC using a USB cable through the CN1 USB connector. And third, we are now ready to download and debug our first Azure Artos application. A very interesting new feature available in stm 32 cubeid is that you have a special view panels for ThreadX that will make your debugging even easier. You can enable different views on ThreadX, even flags, memory, message queues, mutexes, semaphores, thread list, that we are going to use now, and timers. If we resume the execution, you can see the board LED is blinking. Whenever you suspend the execution again, this thread list will show for each thread its name, current priority, state, rank count, and several other information on its stack. This is another very cool feature just introduced in this last release of stm 32 cubeid well, with really a few clicks, we have been able to create, configure, compile and debug our first simple Azure Artos application. Additional and even more complex examples for ThreadX, FileX, USBX and NetX Duo are available, but you can also start a new one from scratch from stm 32 cubemx or stm 32 cubeid Before wishing you the best of luck, with your next STM32 Azure Artos projects, let me share a couple of important links you don't want to miss if you like to dive deeper in this topic. Our STM32 QB ecosystem landing page, where you can find lots of additional resources, videos and webinars. Our Xcube Azure H7 landing page with product overview, software packages and documentation. And finally our STM32 MCU wiki page where in the development zone you can learn more about using and customizing Azure Artos middlewares into our STM32 ecosystem. Well, thanks a lot for your attention on this introduction to our first Xcube Azure Artos release. Many others are coming with improvements and new available collaterals and online material. So please stay tuned. Don't forget to visit our STM32 Cube landing page and have a wonderful day.